You're watching Straight Line with Dan Rogers, President and CEO of Cherry Street Mission Ministries. Hi everyone and welcome to Straight Line with Dan Rogers. I am Molly Elrod and I'm here with Dan. Dan, today we're going to be talking about a uh, topic that isn't normally presented as such, but we're going to be talking about parents. We are. And one question that I have for you today is, what is the difference between parents and parenting? Uh, I am a cat parent, so I think I know everything there is to know uh, about parenting, and I always want to tell everyone else how to parent. But in fact, you are a parent of several children. Yeah, and grandchildren mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So you probably have a lot more insight uh, on what it really means to parent. Well, it's an interesting question, uh, and we're going to be unpacking that all day today, Molly. Um, my good friend, Judge Andy Devine, is with us here today, and he'll be on studio in just a quick minute. Um, Andy and I go way back on this topic, and he, as you will hear today, uh, goes further back uh, than I do. As a matter of fact, it was Andy that brought me in to this vital conversation, the difference between parenting and parents. Simply, the difference is parenting is what we want parents to do. Right or what parents are to do, which is a very vital topic. But you know, we've had generations and lots and lots of resources and materials are out there available for parents on the topic of parenting. What there isn't a whole lot, Molly, is an understanding of the value of the person themselves, this parent, this noun. So the major difference is, I actually if you'll allow it, mm -hmm. the difference between a noun and an adjective. You know, uh, parenting is what we do, but parent is the value of the individual themselves. Has the church missed the mark in parenting and parents, how we treat each topic? Well, I think this is one of the ways that the church can and should get better and uh, think differently about parents and mm -hmm. uh, focus less, I think, on uh, the value of uh, what a parent can do mm -hmm. and add to that value the value of the human being themselves. Okay. so. When you say value, where, where have we put our values as far as parenting goes? I, I guess you're going to unpack the parent and parenting role, but I have put value on my nieces or nephews. You have sure. put value on your children. Yes. So are we not putting value on our parents as, as we should or as much attention as we should? Uh, sadly, no. And I don't mean just the church, but just sociologically right, altogether. Yeah not from education, from the judicial system, to the court systems, to the penal system, we are now living in an age in 21st century America, Molly, where we are very focused on the child and the youth, and we've lost focus in equal fashion on the parents. And what Andy and I are gonna be talking about today is returning in equal measure, because we're not talking about taking a, fo a focus or attention off the child, we believe whatever focus and attention is on the child, you should increase Absolutely, it. Sure. What's missing is the equal focus that we must have on the parent themselves. Because if in fact the parent is healthy, you can imagine that of course uh, the children will be healthy as well. And I think we've been so focused in the last several generations on the health of the children, mm -hmm. we've lost focus on the health of the parent. So one of the things that we went out and did was we shot this video that tells the story very quickly. And then when we get back from the video, Andy will be on stage with us and we'll, we'll have Andy uh, here talk to us about uh, his history on this topic. Awesome, great. I grew up in a large family, for the most part in poverty. My parents were raised in a coal mining region of our country and though they were poorly educated, they were hardworking people. I grew up also in violence. My mom and dad were very violent toward each other and they dispensed that violence to me and my siblings. Uh, from a very early age, unfortunately, I knew a kind of hell that was gonna stick with me for years to come. The church was definitely a part of my growing up years. Not any specific church, mind you. There were many churches as I was growing up, but you know the body of Christ. And because we were a large family, the church really engaged our family with what I considered to be frankly even then with a lot of sincerity. You know they provided sponsorships to youth camps and youth opportunities. When we were hungry they brought us food. We didn't have any gifts during the holidays. They would come and bring us gifts we could share it one with the other. And their showing up really in our family and our home life was a great relief but not a remedy. Certainly not a remedy for the chaos and the destruction that was happening between their visits. 
I remember thinking one day as a young boy, I wish somebody would stop and pay attention to my mom and dad. You see, somehow I instinctively knew as a kid what you and I know as adults, that a healthy kid is gonna come from healthy parents. I've got a question for you. If we know and acknowledge that parents actually make their kids' lives when they're unhealthy, why can't we acknowledge and accept that if we have healthy parents, they'll produce healthy children? We have unwittingly played into the hands of destruction by somehow thinking that if we reach this generation, our tomorrows are gonna be so much better. It hasn't happened. The facts are the facts. Statistically, results over the last several years tell a very chilling tale. For all of our effort, for all the billions of dollars that we've spent, our city centers are still in decay. Violence among youth, it's skyrocketing. Teen pregnancy, whether rural, suburban, or urban, continues to increase. High school dropout rates, particularly in Central City, through the roof. And now poverty is now touching and reaching families at every sector and every region of our country. With parents and their health out of the question and out of the picture, the great unraveling of the family is now reaching pandemic proportions. Public education is being called upon to teach family values. Jobs and family services maxed out as they try to reach families' most basic human needs. Our prison systems busting at the seams, mostly filled with moms and dads that are present with each other, but absent from their own children. All of these systems are trying to accomplish something that biblically belonged to the parents and to the parent alone. All of this reminds me of a fellow in the book of Acts named Philip. Philip was called by God to be a runner to his generation. One day, God called upon Philip to overtake a chariot who was carrying an Ethiopian eunuch. This particular fellow was already a follower of God, already on his way from worship and reading the prophet Isaiah. As Philip came and overtook the chariot as God had commanded, he noticed the one thing and asked the one thing that I believe needs to be asked in our generation today. Do you understand? I believe our response today needs to be just like that eunuch saw on that day when we say, how can we understand if there is no one to instruct us? I believe so many today do not understand the context of their day. We simply don't understand why incarceration is just out of control. We don't understand why the fabric of our families is unraveling. And we certainly don't understand why parents don't seem to care about the health of their own children. This is the great frontier of the church. As God was to Philip, he is now to you and me. It is time for you and I to regain our footing within the family. It's time for you and I to put our hands on the unraveling fabric of family and reverse this generation's decay where the family is concerned. God is calling you and I as runners of our generation to run with understanding, to bring solutions and to firm up the foundation of our parents and to secure our hope for tomorrow. You see, you and I are the church, you and I can run with understanding. You and I are runners of our generation. And we can decide today whether we're gonna be uh, the ones in the chariot that have no understanding, or we can be the runners that run along beside of the lack of understanding and bring understanding to this generation. You and I can lace up. You and I can run together. is a deeply held uh, conviction of mine personally. And welcome with me to the stage today, Judge Andy Devine. Uh, Andy, you and I, uh, I feel like we go back years and years, but it really hasn't been that long as, at all. But you're the kind of person that if you know you for a minute, I, you feel like you know you for 50 years. Uh, but as a retired juvenile judge, you are the champion, in my opinion, of this topic of the value of parents, even the pin that you're wearing today is Think Parent. Uh, so Andy, welcome to today's show. Glad to be here. Yeah, so good to have you here today. Andy, will you quickly unpack for our viewers today why, actually let's do a smaller question than that. How did we get here? In 2014, you and I know, and you would know better than anyone, that there was a time in America where this was not a question mark. Parents were valued. 
and we poured a lot of energy and time into parents, but not so today. Yes, uh, of course, I'm, I'm 92. I was born in 1921. Mm. I grew up in the 20s and 30s. That's my childhood. Mm. And as you said, the culture of the day at that time was entirely different than the culture that we have today. Uh, parents, no question, were valued then. They were considered the, well, the foundation, really, of our community. Everybody looked to parents to take care of their children, and they supported parents, uh, gave them the tools in, in order to do the job. Uh, today, it's so different, uh, and it, it's, a, it's a good question. How did we get here? How right. did we lose that value? Because it's so important uh, for children for all of us, for society, that uh, parents uh, are valued and uh, because they have uh, an extremely difficult job and an important job, uh, and yet they're not valued, it seems like uh, we're in an age where we know best, we know better than parents, and so right. we're taking over and taking charge of uh, children uh, instead of letting parents be in charge and taking care of their kids. Well, there's a large distrust now, Andy, in 21st century America toward parents. Would you agree? No question. Yeah, in fact, they, it's so bad that they, they're, we just disregard them. We just think that they can't do it. They're incompetent. Uh, they don't know how. And we know better, and we, the government, and all the social services know better how to take care of kids, and we're going to take care of kids. Uh, it's not working. Right. Well, now, Andy, you had a major transformation as a juvenile judge. Because as a juvenile judge, you were very, your charge, your oath was focused on the juvenile, focused on the child, focused on the youth in front of you. But tell our audience today, Andy, you had a major transformation while you were on the bench regarding the topic of parents. Oh, you, you, I tell you when, you, when you become a juvenile court judge, uh, you, you begin to really recognize what is and what is not important. And what I found on the bench was that uh, not just me, but society, uh, we were focusing on kids who were in trouble. We were trying to help them. We were trying to make them well enough and whole enough so that they could be good, good children and good adults. But uh, you, you soon found out that when you get into this, it's so complex, uh, the early stages of life, that uh, this idea of the village, you know, we hear, in fact, there's a book written by Hillary Clinton that takes a village to right. raise a child. Uh, you soon find out that uh, when the village takes over, uh, nobody's in charge. Everybody is doing their thing, and nobody is in charge taking care of that day-to-day -day needs of a child. And Andy, isn't that where it fell off the cliff? I mean, the whole idea that the day and age that you, ra you were raised in, you, other parents in your community did look out for you. And if, and if something was going on with you, they contacted your parents right away. But somewhere along the way, Andy, we've taken that simple concept of it takes a village, as you've said, and now we've completely disregarded the value of the parents. We've skipped over the value of the parents. And now, as you've said, Andy, because no one's in charge, no one's in charge. When everybody is in charge, nobody is in charge. I mean, you can't run a family by a committee in the community. Uh, it just doesn't work. Well, one I, thing, I'm sorry, I just, I'm curious, you know, as you're speaking about this topic, the, the thing that struck me, backing up a little bit, you said our foundation, our parents. So how has that foundation crumbled and allowed everybody else but the parents to take responsibility for the child? You know, where, where have we as society missed that mark? Is it just that slow fade that we talk about? that, oh, it just happened over time, or somewhere along the line, someone knew better than mom and dad. And Dan, to your point, I, I find it curious, we wanna keep out of everybody's business, so we don't run to Johnny's dad and say, hey, I've, I've observed something that is disturbing to me. 
you know, why don't we do that anymore? Who, who along the way said that's not right? You know, stay out of their business. What do you think, Andy? Well, and again, I, I don't know where it started or how it started, uh, uh, but it's been a gradual process. Uh, I mean, just for an example, I, I refer back to ADC, Aid to Dependent Children, uh, in the 30s. That was passed in 1936. Instead of focusing on parents, Aid to Dependent Parents, all of a sudden we're looking to take care of children. Mm. Uh, why, why did we get into that instead of supporting parents so parents can take care of the kids and get into the ballpark where we knew better and we want to take care of the community, wanted to take care of the children. Uh, I, as I said, there were many things that went into that uh, during the war, uh, Second World War, when men were, many of them, fathers were gone and mothers were working. Uh, full time, all of a sudden, uh, you know, you get into babysitting and and uh, you're turning again, uh, taking care of children over to somebody else other than mom and dad. Sometimes it's necessary, but uh, there's no question that uh, mom and dad have a very unique role. Uh, when you consider how complex a child is. I, I refer to it frequently, trying to understand how complex a baby is. I compare it to a, the space shuttle. Uh, can you imagine all of the stuff that went into a space shuttle? It took 18 years to build. It cost $18 billion. It involved over 18,000 scientists and engineers, hundreds and hundreds of computers and all, just to get a space shuttle off the ground and up into space to land with this uh, up there and unload and, and, and come back to Earth. Look at the amount of time and support you give to that program. At every stage of that program, somebody was in charge and always take care of how day to day this, this whole thing is put together. And yet you look at a baby and you look at how complex that baby is trying to get that baby now safely from childhood, from day one to adulthood. What's the game plan? Who's in charge? What kind of support does that baby need in order to make it there? And instead of looking to parents uh, to do the job, uh, all of a sudden the community has taken over and they think they can do better. I don't know, I, it's, 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 a, it's a good question as to how did we get here because I'm telling you, the old fashioned way of mom and dad being in charge, taking care, being responsible, and the community supporting them so that they have the tools to do the job in the first place and holding them responsible for their, uh, their charge, uh, all of a sudden we, society has just begun to take over and it's crumbling. I, we're Andy, you and I have been in this conversation for quite some time, as we said a moment ago. You and I believe, as do others, we're, thank God, not alone in this topic. This can be reversed. This does not have to be the way things are. What it, are some of the steps you've been taking over the last 20 years, Andy? Oh, I think it, had, it's not, it can be, it has to be. It, I mean, we've I got to reverse it because uh, the road we're going down is, is not the right road and, and we're going to end up into chaos uh, if we don't get this, get this reversed because uh, the community cannot. <clears throat> Everybody has to, I, I explained it the best way, uh, uh, the game plan. And it's, it's not our plan, it's God's plan. It's, it's Mother Nature's plan. This is the way Mother Nature and God has designed us so that we can pass on the gift of life, so we can take care of that life, so that they in turn can pass on the gift of life. Uh, it's an awesome process, but it, it, uh, it has to be reversed. We have to, everybody has to get in, uh, involved in this. It can't be done just by one entity. It can't be done just by the church. 
Although the church plays a, can play a major role in this. And, and should in my world anyway. Has to, has to. Because I, and I believe, Andy, the church can in fact, though we do need other vital institutions, government, policymakers at every level to understand the value of parents once again. But Andy, you and I do believe that the faith community, the church, the body of Christ, can and should take a leadership role in helping shape policy and helping shape the direction of our country relative to the value of parents. No question. And, and, and uh, for some reason, again, they are caught, it seems like, in the same uh, vein that the society is, that uh, they spend a lot of time uh, focusing on the child. Uh, but where, where do they actually, you know, men and women in uniform, I compare it also to, uh, to men and women in uniform. Uh, you indicated earlier uh, focusing on the person mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> of a parent, not parenting, not telling parents this is the what you should do, this is how you should do it, but understanding the importance of the person, just like we understand the importance of a soldier. You know, the soldier, we salute the soldier, we thank right. the soldier, we parade the soldier. Mm -hmm. We understand the soldier is a very important. He, she are the ones that protect our freedom. Well, the same thing we should do with the parents. We should understand the parent, the person, how important the person. We should salute them, we should thank them, we should honor them, we should parade them. We should put them out there as saying, you know, you are the foundation of society. You are the ones that are can change everything. You are the ones that we have to look to because nobody else can do it. Yeah, and I think the fine point that you're making is that we've got to reverse the trend of singly focusing on the value of the child and include first the value of mom and dad, mom and, dad. and resource them to the max because a healthy mom and dad is going to produce by nature and by God's law will produce a healthy child. Boy, I tell you, in the court, if you juvenile court judge, you find out real quick where the good kids come from and where the bad kids come from. Uh, Do you think that our parents are lacking tools, that they just aren't equipped the way they used to be, or they're, they're missing you know, key elements to say, hey, I am a great parent, and I, I, I can parent my child. Is, is there something that the church needs to uh, equip them better with because we don't need another book study. We don't need another uh, s uh, group support. There's just got to be something in their tool belt that is missing. There's no question we are not supporting them and many parents do not have the tools to be good parents. They do not have the support. I mean parents, uh, it's an extremely difficult job. Uh, and we the community, instead of supporting them so that they can do the job, a lot of the, when you say support, you have to understand that it's not just love and attention, and but you have to understand that parents have to realize that they are in charge. They are responsible. Parents have to know that this job of, of getting this kid safely to adulthood uh, they are the ones prime the law you know of course as i said being a juvenile court judge you have to understand the law and the law says i mean you got to feed the kid you got to clothe the kid you got to house the kid you got to do this you got to do that you got to do everything and if you don't then we're going to take the child away from you and give the child to children's services and that's an awesome job to terminate parental rights uh, but if we don't give them the support if they don't understand uh, how important they are. Mm. Uh, that's part of the tools to get them just to understand that only they, they, mother, dad, are the ones who can adequately take care of the child from day one. I mean, uh, you know, there's a big movement now on mm -hmm. Aspire here in the community. There is. Uh, they're trying to uh, I don't know exactly what their goal is, but it seems like the goal is that if we can just keep kids in school and educate the kids, the kids are going to be fine. And, and nowhere in that whole scenario do I see, wait a minute, 
how are you going to take care of kids to get into school in the first place? Right. Uh, are they going to come to school ready to learn? Who is responsible for making sure that they are coming to school in kindergarten or first grade ready to learn? Who's in charge of that? Make sure that that happens. Well, and this is the thing that you and I have uh, said in all of our community meetings, is how do we get to uh, the conversation where if we're going to talk about cradle to career, when we use the word cradle, who <laughs> is standing in at the foot of the bassinet? And that's the conversation that we're having right now in our community. And we would just say right now to those of you who are watching us, and by the way, Andy, thank you so much for being on the show. There's so much that we can talk about. I've got to have you back on the show. Would you be willing to come back sometime? Oh, absolutely. Thank this you so is, much. This is important. Thank you. It is a huge topic, and you and I have often said it's not complicated. It's just complex. <laughs> the whole idea that we could value parents, again, is not a complicated uh, concept. But getting there is very complex because we didn't get here easily. But as you watch today's show, as a member of the body of Christ, can I tell you that your role in reversing trends within our community is squarely within your authority and within your power to do so. The church is the body of Christ, and there isn't another entity or institution that has been charged by God to solve and to straighten out the crooked lines between problems and solutions than you the body of Christ in your church. I would encourage you, talk to your pastor in the next couple of weeks about, Pastor, they were talking on Straight Line last week about how we can begin to value parents better and then begin that dialogue at curb level within your own congregation and see what God will do in those conversations. In the meantime, will you please go to our website and give uh, the best attention you can give to the work of Cherry Street Mission Ministries. We need your help more than ever before. Numbers continue to grow. Uh, meals continue to uh, go almost unchecked and unedited. And hunger, of course, is at new levels in our community. More than anything, we need you, the body of Christ, to actually be engaged. You always have been. You're fantastic in the way that you support Cherry Street Mission Ministries. But now, with the ability of uh, the church coming online and really reversing trends within our community, today's the day. The threshold is now. Molly, thank you so much for being with us today. What did you think as you would just talk to the church today about what the church can do very quickly? Well, I totally understand what you're saying now about the parenting and parent role. Mm. And what a challenge we have in front of us and that it's uh, a biblical charge for us to parent and for it to be the mom and dad. Uh, unfortunately, from what I've heard, we've relied on the community, but the community has failed us to come around and give that rap support. So I just think it's so important that it be the mom and dad taking the role. So thank you so much for joining us with uh, Straight Line with Dan Rogers, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.